Story twelve of the Bet and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Story twelve: A Living Calendar. State Councillor Sharamikin's drawing room is wrapped in a pleasant half darkness. The big bronze lamp with the green shade makes the walls, the furniture, the faces all green, couleur nuit de grain occasionally a smouldering log flares up in the dying fire and for a moment casts a red glow over the faces but this does not spoil the general harmony of light the general tone as the painters say is well sustained sheremichin sits in a chair in front of the fireplace in the attitude of a man who has just dined he is an elderly man with a high official's grey side whiskers and meek blue eyes tenderness is shed over his face and his lips are set in a melancholy smile at his feet stretched out lazily with his legs toward the fireplace vice-governor lipniev sits on a little stool he is a brave-looking man of about forty sheremichin's children are moving about round the piano nina kolya nadya and vanya the door leading to madame sheremichin's room is slightly open and the light breaks through timidly there behind the door sits sheremichin's wife anna pavlovna in front of her writing-table she is president of the local ladies committee a lively piquant lady of thirty years and a little bit over through her pince-nez her vivacious black eyes are running over the pages of a french novel beneath the novel lies a tattered copy of the report of the committee for last year formerly our town was much better off in these things says sheremichin screwing up his meek eyes at the glowing coals never a winter passed but some star would pay us a visit famous actors and singers used to come but now besides acrobats and organ grinders the devil only knows what comes there's no aesthetic pleasure at all we might be living in a forest yes and does your excellency remember that italian tragedian what's his name he was so dark and tall uh, let me think oh yes luigi ernesto di ruggiero remarkable talent and strength he had only to say one word and the whole theatre was on the qui vive my darling anna used to take a great interest in his talent she hired the theatre for him and sold tickets for the performances in advance in return he taught her elocution and gesture a first-rate fellow he came here to be quite exact twelve years ago oh no that's not true less ten years anna dear how old is our nina she'll be ten next birthday calls anna pavlovna from her room why oh nothing in particular my dear i was just curious and good singers used to come do you remember polipchin the tenore di grazia what a charming fellow he was how good-looking fair a very expressive face parisian manners and what a voice your excellency only one weakness he would sing some notes with his stomach and would take re falsetto otherwise everything was good tamberlick he said had taught him my dear anna and i hired a hall for him at the social club and in gratitude for that he used to sing to us for whole days and nights he taught dear anna to sing he came i remember it as though it were last night in lent some twelve years ago no it's more how bad my memory is getting heaven help me anna dear how old is our darling nadja twelve twelve then we've got to add ten months that makes it exact thirteen somehow there used to be more life in our town then take for instance the charity soirees what enjoyable soirees we used to have before how elegant there were singing playing and recitation after the war i remember when the turkish prisoners were here dear anna arranged a soiree on behalf of the wounded we collected eleven hundred roubles i remember the turkish officers were passionately fond of dear anna's voice and kissed her hand incessantly ah asiatics but a grateful nation would you believe me the soiree was such a success that i wrote an account of it in my diary it was um i remember it as though it had only just happened in 
Seventy-six. No, in seventy-seven. No. Pray, when were the Turks here, Anna dear? How old is our little Kolya? I'm seven, papa, says Kolya, a brat with a swarthy face and coal-black hair. Yes, we're old, and we've lost the energy we used to have, Lopniev agreed with a sigh. That's the real cause. Old age, my friend. No new moving spirits arrive, and the old ones grow old. The old fire is dull now. When I was younger, I did not like company to be bored. I was your Anna Pavlovna's first assistant. Whether it was a charity soiree or a tambola to support a star who was going to arrive, whatever Anna Pavlovna was arranging, I used to throw over everything and began to bustle about. One winter, I remember I bustled and ran so much that I even got ill. I shan't forget that winter. Do you remember what a performance we arranged with Anna Pavlovna in aid of the victims of the fire? What year was it? oh not so very long ago in uh, seventy nine N no in in eighty i believe tell me how old is your vanya five anna pavlovna calls from the study well that means it was six years ago yes my dear friend that was a time it's all over now the old fire's quite gone lipniev and sheremikin grew thoughtful the smouldering log flares up for the last time and then is covered in ash. End of story 12